Hi, I'm Hielke, and welcome to my World Machine tutorial series. In this video, we will cover three of World Machine's most important type of devices, the combiner devices, being the chooser, combiner, and multi-chooser devices. All these devices can be found in the combiner tab. We start off with the chooser device. It has three inputs, input A, input B, and control C, and lets you combine A and B based on the value of C. Let's hook up a basic noise, and a Voronoi device, and a gradient device. We will then alter the parameters a bit. We increase the elevation base of the basic noise, decrease the feature scale of the Voronoi, and set the style to F2 minus F1, and decrease the width of the gradient. When we now look at the chooser, we see something interesting happening. The two terrains are blended, though not in an outstanding manner. And that's basically what the chooser device does, blending two maps based on a control input. An important note, it is only possible to either blend two height fields or two bitmaps together, as the two cannot be mixed. The guide input is always a height field. When opening the properties, we see three parameters. Method, mixed order, and favor elevations from, which is currently disabled. The method determines how A and B are mixed with each other, and is an enumeration of the following methods. Alpha blend is the default, and simply mixes the two terrains without any further thought to it, creating this ugly seam. When we set it to height matching, however, something interesting happens. Instead of blindly mixing the two terrains, the chooser now tries to match the elevations of both terrains and therefore creating a much more natural transition. The favor elevations from parameter now also becomes available, allowing us to choose a bias from either of the two terrains elevation. The pre-multiplied speciality method first blends B into A and then mixes them like the alpha blend method. This is why we see the foreigner shape both on the left and the right, but the basic noise shape only on the left. The last method, add, will be skipped as it is a deprecated method and should therefore not be used. Let's set the method to alpha blend before we continue. The mixing order determines where to choose A and where to choose B, based on the value of the control input. By default, it chooses to display B for high values and A for low values. If we set it to the other option instead, the choosing flips. And that's all the chooser device does blending two height fields or bitmaps based on the height value of the control input. It is often used for texturing or blending two different types of terrain together. For example, when you have a desert and a mountain range, you can use the chooser to blend those together nicely. An alteration on the chooser device is the multi-chooser. Though limited in some aspects, it allows us to blend more than two height fields or bitmaps together. The input at the top, the guide input, is similar to the control C input of the chooser, as the height field connected to this input determines where which of the inputs are chosen. Then, a bit contraintuitively, at the top we begin with the lowest values, then the middle values, and at the bottom we have the highest values. At the other side, the outputs are as followed. At the top we have the primary output, which is all the layers combined together, and the other outputs all output the mask where the corresponding input is mixed into the primary output. When opening the properties, we can change the number input from 2 to 16, and the parameter below it, transition contrast, controls the blending of the layers. When set to 0, the layers will smoothly blend over into each other, but when set to the max value of 0 0.999, the transition areas will be small and rapid, sometimes leading to artifacts. A scenario in which the multi-chooser shines is when you want to apply an effect differently depending on the terrain's height. This is different from just applying a mask to the device delivering the effect, because a mask only allows you to control the intensity of an effect. Using a multi-chooser, you can change the parameter for each input, giving you a tight control over the effect. And last but not least, the combiner device. This is one of the most commonly used devices, as it allows for a plethora of methods to combine both height fields and bitmaps, even allowing you to blend a height field with a bitmap all whilst being quick and easy to use. We see it has two ports, both named primary input, a mask input, something the chooser and the multi-chooser lack, and one output. 
What's also interesting is that the name of the device is average and not combiner, as you'd expect. This is because combiners are used so often, it becomes a real tiring practice to always have to open the properties before knowing what method is used. To tackle that, World Machine displays the method as the name of the device instead. Let's connect the forward noise and the basic noise to the port and take a look at the properties of the combiner. When opening the properties, we see two parameters, method and strength. The method is an enumeration of the several methods we can use and the strength parameter that is control the strength or bias of a method. I say bias because there is one method that's not really using it as a strength control and that's the default method, average. Some things to keep in mind, some methods will yield a different result if the ports are flipped and I will indicate so with three icons, port dependent, semi-port dependent and independent. The semi-port dependent means that, when the strength parameter is set to 1, the port order doesn't matter. To make the methods a bit more easier to discuss, we will no longer talk about height, but instead talk about grayscale values, which go from black to white, respectively 0 to 1. The average method lets us fade between the two inputs. When the strength is set to 0, only the first input is passed through, and when set to 1, only the second input is passed through. In between, we see the two terrains blend into each other. This method is quite similar to the alpha blend of the chooser if we were to use a constant device for the control. When changing the height of the constant, it's as if we change the strength of the combiner. The second method is add. It adds the value of the second input to the first input. A benefit of this method is at the same time its pitfall. Because it will truly add the value of the second input to the first input, it can cause clipping if the second input has a high enough value. The subtract method is the opposite of add, and has the same benefit and pitfall, also resulting in clipping if not used carefully. The multiply method multiplies the values of both inputs. The result is that everything becomes darker, unless the pixels in both inputs are at max value. It is a useful method for layering multiple masks. Divide, despite its name may suggest, is not the exact opposite of multiply, but from an arithmetic standpoint it is, as it divides instead of multiplying. This method can result in clipping because of that property, since if you divide a value by anything less than its value, it will become larger than 1 and therefore clip. The screen method on the other hand is the exact opposite of multiply. It first inverts both inputs, then multiplies them and then inverts them again. When screening two inputs, the result is a brighter output. The overlay method is a mix of multiply and screen, as darker parts will become darker and brighter parts will become brighter. All values below 0.5 will be multiplied and all values above 0.5 will be screened. Values at 0.5 will be left unchanged. When set to max, the combiner will only let through a value of the second input if it is greater than the value of the first input. This method, in my opinion, is the better alternative for the add method, as it does almost the same without the clipping. Min is the opposite of max, and it will only let through a value of the second input if it is lesser than the value of the first input. Unlike the max and add comparison, this method is not to be compared with the subtract method, as they both do distinctively different blending. The power method is a bit reminiscent to the multiply method, but instead of multiplying, the value of the first input is exponentiated with varying power based on the second input. The root method is the opposite of the power method, as it takes a root of the first input value with varying power based on the second input. The extract differences method looks at the value of both inputs and will output the differences between those values in respect to the first input. If there is no difference, the output value will be 0.5. If the value of the second input is lesser than the value of the first input, the outputted value will be greater than 0.5. If the second input's value is greater than the first input's value, the outputted value will be lesser than 0.5. Detail with differences is a method unclear to me, and with no documentation on it, I cannot give you a good answer. However, if I do manage to figure out its mechanics, I will post it in the comments below. And finally, absolute differences. It's kind of the same as extract differences, but both the negative and the positive differences are now positive and level to zero. If there's no difference, it is zero, and if there's maximum difference, it is one. 
and that's where all the methods for the combiner devised. What method to use highly depends on what you're planning on using the combiner for and is something you will get a better feeling for the more you use it. It helps to play around with it and try all the methods every now and then, instead of sticking to one or two methods. The combiner devices are great tools for blending terrain and textures, giving you much control and allowing you to create intricate terrains. That wraps it up for this video. See ya!